Welcome to the 2020 Digital Award Show of Berlin Series. This is not exactly how we planned it, but it's still our way and the response to COVID. In these maddening times we are in, uh, we still need to push and celebrate this year's artists and the great storytelling we have in 2020. So we hope you do enjoy the adjusted program. We have a wonderful jury that is presenting our winners in all the categories of drama, comedy and documentary series. And we miss sharing the festival with you, of course, but it's impossible to recreate the festival spirit if we cannot come together. So we do hope to see you in 2021 and we do hope that you enjoy the winners. Hallo Marc, ich freue mich, dass du mich in diesem Jahr wieder fragst, ein paar Grußworte zu deinem, zu unserem schönen Festival zu sagen. Wie du weißt, ist es ja auch für mich sehr wichtig, dass Autorinnen und Autoren in die Öffentlichkeit gehoben werden, dass sie eine Plattform bekommen und ich finde es ganz toll, dass ihr das dieses Jahr unter diesen schwierigen Bedingungen trotzdem macht, wenn auch nur virtuell, aber wir sind ja für die virtuelle Wirklichkeit irgendwie auch zuständig. Ich ich finde es toll, dass ihr in drei Kategorien Dokumentarfilm, der ja die Wirklichkeit abbildet und die Wahrhaftigkeit sich auf die Fahne geschrieben hat, eine also Dokumentarserie, in Sachen Comedy und in Sachen Drama ähm, Talente sucht, findet und auszeichnet. Und dass man sozusagen die Kette nicht abreißen lässt, äh, Filme machen, Serien machen, äh, eine Plattform zu bieten. Öffentlichkeit zu bieten und zu sagen, hallo, wir sind da, die Ideen gehen weiter, sind genauso wichtig wie vorher, denn irgendwann gehen wir alle wieder ans Set und machen neue Sachen, hoffentlich unter den besten Bedingungen. Also viel Glück äh, den Preisträgern, aber auch allen, die einfach dabei sind und äh, die tolle Sachen abgeliefert haben und ein möglichst breites Publikum und bis nächstes Jahr. It takes a village to make a TV show and um, there's nobody else here to hear this. So I will immediately have to tell all the others. Thank you. Yes. You escaped, didn't you? You make it sound like I was in prison. You weren't you? No, but I left without telling anyone. Why did you leave? God expected too much of me. You want wow, better screenplay really? with Unorthodox? Yes. Yes. Spoiling us. Yes. What? Congratulations. Hi, thank you. Thank what an you. Amazing, I can't believe you're just show. telling me. I mean, it, it takes a village to make a TV show, and um, there's nobody else here to hear this. So I will immediately have to tell all the others. Thank you. Yes, okay. absolutely. Very amazing. Amazing series. What a powerful, so powerful emotionally. I mean, for me, uh, and there was a lot of great competition I and mean, all the shows were wonderful that the finalists were all amazing. But um, emotionally, you just, for me, you just grabbed me and I, I guess everyone else on the jury as well because uh, I was just so taken by it on every level. The, the writing was magnificent, the acting, the way it was shot, it was just so powerful. And um, you. you deserve every award you can get. I mean, it's just an amazing well, show. Well, it was a really a labor of love for everybody involved. It was a really intimate project in a way. Um, you know, we were, it was made among friends. You know, the original book that inspired the series was written by a friend of mine. It's the story of her life and uh, Deborah Feldman. And it was, um, I created the show with Alexa Karolinski who is a good friend of mine and it was a very you know um personal intimate experience writing it together and then it was directed by maria schrada who is the star of my other tv show so um wow. she's also an actress so you know we all know each other really well and it was a very um kind of exciting uh extension of of our friendships so that was really very special well it sounds like it's fantastic the fact that your friend was the author of the book and and, and you, your other friend was the director of some of the work it sounds like a very family oriented affair and uh, you guys pulled it together beautifully oh, thank really you beautiful. thank you well you know it was also the yiddish made it really fun you know because 
you know, I don't speak Yiddish, but my grandparents spoke it. And we had this amazing guy named Ellie Rosen, who was our Yiddish translator. And he was also very involved in the writing in a way, because he because he translated the scripts, but he also helped us to understand how they use English, you know, and how they, what they mean, you know, they have just a different way of using language. And so that was a, he was a special part of our writing team. And he also played the rabbi and he was on set Oh, the whole wow. time coaching all the other actors in their in their Yiddish. So, well, yeah, there. that was so spot on and specific, and, and uh, you know that culture was captured so wonderfully. Like I said, it, I, I just thought it was uh, incredible. I said, "Who's the genius who wrote this?" I can find out. <laughs> well, thank you, Alexa. Will be very proud too. I'll tell her. In mir ist es dunkel. Mein Bewusstsein ist ein einsames Licht. Eine Kerze im Luftzug. Alles andere liegt im Schatten. The show is incredible. Uh, the cinematography. I can find one bad performance on the show. Pleasure to meet you. Congratulations, your work um, on the show is incredible. Excellent, excellent work. Um, I was blown away by your presence. Uh, you've got such charisma and um, your silences, your silences say so much and that really just, oh, really good. Thank, Thank you. you, you've inspired me. What did you think when you, when you first read the scripts? I, I got the books um, book by book because they were still uh, writing on it. But I liked it from the beginning. And um, I know the director from Vienna. So um, I was looking forward uh, and was very happy to, to work with him. He has a good chance uh, to work with, with actors, you know. Yes. So it, it was very very nice to, to work and uh, the colleagues were, were very nice too. So it was a lot of fun. The show is incredible. Uh, the cinematography, I can find one bad performance on the show. Costume, set design was incredible. It was so beautifully <laughs> shot. Yeah, the entire thing was just so stunning. So really beautiful, so beautiful to watch. Mm -hmm. How did you prepare for the role? Uh, we had um, a coach uh, but they, are the, they were still writing on the books uh, so the director was also um, working with the coach together uh, mm -hmm. with um, Jill Foreman from, from London and it was really interesting because um, it was a, a way to work which I never used before. There was seven different parts of the of the character and uh, you so then seven chairs and you had to sit uh, always in one chair to to uh, fulfill one part of, of this character one of the seven and sometimes they they were fighting with, with each other or uh, it was really really interesting uh, like I said before, it was a way to work uh, I never used before. How, what were some of your um, your favorite scenes out of the um, out of the show? For example, I like the, the kind of crazy one when when um, uh, the the singer uh, is in the back in this um, bubble and in this in dark. bubble and singing and and. And dancing, I, I like this one. This uh, that's one of my. So I was trying to destroy my my voice all the time. I was uh, shouting and and <coughs> all the time to destroy my voice and to have a hoarse uh, voice. That's right. You do sound different. Mm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah the transformation. No. Amazing. It's really inspiring for us. I'm very honored and I'm really happy to get this prize.
I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous because of the of the news you just told me. Um, I'll, I'll I'll get organized. <laughs> Uh, Mariano, I'm uh, very pleased to meet you, uh, especially for that reason, because uh, you are the winner of, uh, you are the best director of the festival. So congratulations. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed. I can, I just, I'm so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful for the festival because uh, I, I, you, you never expect anything like that. So, and, and especially with this jury that I, I read Uh, who you were and everything I knew that this festival was going on I'm really impressed and I'm very I'm really thankful for for your decision I hope you're not wrong I I, I hope you you made the, the right decision you know thank you I'm quite, so much yeah this is a story about this about this um, this young man 22 23 years old who started to really believe that what he was um, Uh, wanting to do with all his colleagues was the right thing to do but without realizing he got involved in all this really um, uh, thing that got out of, out of control so um, but you know we, we try to put together the human uh, the human values of the characters yeah. uh, together with the with the political situation of Spain at that time we're talking about the, the you know the 60s and the 70s in Spain so it's um, it's a, it's a space where the human and the political um, it, uh, you know uh, uh, confront and all the uh, and then uh, the, the, all this scene from a, a human being uh, point of view uh, takes you to a very um, conflictive situation uh, so yeah we, we were, I'm sorry I'm a little nervous because of the of the news you just told me um, I'll, I'll I'll get organized. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the whole series can be seen as a parallel with certain situations where, where nationalism starts to, you know, be a, like a complication for the for democracy. I mean, um, the movement has its roots in a, in all the um, in a, in all the fight against Franco's dictatorship. So that is totally right, and it's totally. Um, fair so to say but the thing is that when when uh, people start to take uh, you know to make decisions on their own about yeah. other people's lives then yeah. it all gets out of control and that is what happened you know uh, in fact they, this is what the series of the invisible line is is um, uh, trying to tell is telling the story of all that time when the people decide that they have to take actions against specific people of the Spanish dictatorship until they are ready to take the actions and they do the, the actual action, which is something that totally crashes uh, inside themselves. So that is what. So this was a story that I, I found very interesting to explore. We did a very long um, uh, pre uh, preparation of the script, a long period of writing, and yeah. then we finally found the you know the final the final drafts of, of the script but it was a very very deep um, a period of research with very uh, good people that I could uh, really I had the privilege to work with I, I remember from from David Mami I remember this, this I've read a lot of and, I, and I've done a lot of um, directing on Mamet's uh, plays too I love Mamet's work I remember his advice when I started to direct, he said, keep it simple, keep it simple. And I think that is the main thing, to keep it simple. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. I really, I really appreciate, you're very generous. I really appreciate, it's an amazing honor for me and for all the crew and all the cast of the series. I will let them know and it's an amazing honor for us. Thank you so much. We got to tell her that she won, and we tell you right now, um, best drama series. Congratulations. Thank you. 
I, I'm actually doing it. Do you want to say hello? I'm doing an interview. Oh, it's being recorded. You can come say hi. No, I, I just found out that um, Unorthodox won many prizes at a the Berlin Series Festival. Oh, really? And they're yeah. recording my response. You can lean in here and say hello. This is one of my children. Hello. <laughs> She's actually, uh, it was on set many times. And uh, both my kids were around a lot um, while we were making the show. So actually everybody's kids were on set. And in fact, Alexa was pregnant with twins that she gave birth to on our last day of production. Wow. So <laughs> we have a lot of unorthodox babies, but um, you know, we none of us have seen each other since we finished it because of lockdown. So all of our actors are, most of them live in Israel. So, and they've been locked down again. So we haven't seen each other, which is crazy. So we spent a lot of time on Zoom and WhatsApp. Wow, what an amazing phone call. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure what we were going to talk about. This, I, I feel embarrassed. I mean, after this big ring light Netflix sent me and I don't even have it up today. So I don't even have my perfect lighting that I'm supposed to be using. So, well, thank you so much. And I hope that next year, you know, we can all be back in the theater yeah. watching yeah. together. I really miss the collective experience of festivals. And I know. Yeah. Now, where are you? Are you based out of LA or? or no, I live you? in Berlin. You live in Berlin. Yeah. Well, Mark's been telling me about this festival, and I was so looking forward to going and, and visiting Berlin. But hopefully, next year we'll have me back, and I'd love to meet you sometime. And, yes, uh, I look forward to meeting you too. Great, great honor talking to you, and congratulations again! What an amazing, amazing show you put together, and uh, you deserve all of this. Thank you. We did it to him. Don't pretend to me that you don't know. Your job is to pretend to them that you don't know. Why don't we bomb it? Build it another bomb to bomb a bomb. We are going to give the press a nuclear explosion. The next bomb must be stopped. This time. My government yeah. lying to the people of Australia, the people and the British government lying to the people of Australia. So, Peter, thank you so much for jumping on a call with us. I have to congratulate you for winning Best Comedy uh, with Operation Buffalo. It's such an amazing show. Congrats. Thank you so much. We're, we're, we're all very honoured for that. We're very proud of the show. And um, the notion of winning at uh, your festival is just a really big plug for us and, um, and a great fillip to our sense of what we've achieved. We're very proud of it. How did you get the idea to write, to pick real events and to turn it into, um, not fiction, but of course with fictional elements is such suburb writing, but what made you pick the theme and the story? Um, well, the story came to me from my colleagues, uh, Vincent Sheen and Tanya Fegan, um, and they had a story that they wanted to make about this really awful part of Australian history, the atomic bomb tests in Maralinga, and yeah. And I thought, look, it was madness. And so we should approach it in a way that isn't too depressing or sad. We should approach it in a way that reflects the madness. And I, I thought about uh, films like um, Dr. Strangelove and uh, yes. novels yes. and shows like uh, Catch One Two. And I thought this is the way to express this thing because you know, you, know, you could look at Marilinga in a very depressing way um, because 20 years after that, a lot of people were suffering. A lot of the people who served there were dying mm. because of what they'd been exposed to during those mm. nuclear tests. I just thought, no, I, I, you know, I know what was going on there was exciting to the guys who were there. They, they, they liked being there. You know, they wanted to be part of the celebration of the British Empire after the Second World War, all that sort of stuff. Mm. And, um, so I just thought, totally, we have to go in this direction. And, um, you know, I, I, I've never thought of it as a comedy comedy. I've thought of it as a dramedy dramedy. Much more. Oh, it is, absolutely. I mean, you certainly mastered the art form. It's a dramedy, as you said, Tyler, and it's such a fine line that you balance between drama and comedy, which uh, still, I think, every two minutes, um, I had to laugh, the jury as well, which is what a good comedy actually does. Mm. 
Der Chef der Berliner Treuhandanstalt Rohwetter ist ermordet worden. The victim was a key figure in the so far futile attempt to overhaul the economy of what was once communist East Germany. Die Mörder haben sich in nichts aufgelöst. Der Mord an Rohwetter, das war. Also auch von mir ganz herzlichen Glückwunsch zu dieser gelungenen Doku-Serie und zu der Auszeichnung. Ähm, ich glaube, dass wir da was ganz Besonderes gesehen haben. Diese Serie besticht einfach durch ihre inhaltliche Präzision, aber auch durch das, was ihr formal umgesetzt habt. Und am Anfang denkt man, naja, will ich mich wirklich so lange mit diesem Thema beschäftigen und dann wird man reingezogen von Episode zu Episode und das ist einfach ganz großartig. Also herzlichen, herzlichen Glückwunsch. Ich finde auch die Grundidee genial, nämlich den Mord an Rohwedder zu nehmen als Dreh- und Angelpunkt und daran dann ein vielleicht das wichtigste Ereignis und die, die wichtigste Phase in der jüngeren deutschen Geschichte zu erzählen. Das ist sehr, sehr gelungen und es ist allen äh, jungen Menschen auch ans Herz zu legen, diese Serie. Also Congratulations an alle Beteiligten. Ja, vielen, vielen Danke. Dank. Das sind ja ganz tolle Worte, ähm, mit denen wir hier überschüttet werden <lacht> förmlich und äh, wir freuen uns extrem und sehr stark. Also weil Sie sind wirklich die Ersten, die das jetzt gesehen haben. Es mhm. ist ja immer nicht ähm, auf der Plattform Netflix zu sehen. Ja, mhm. wir freuen uns. Ja, und vor allem auch, weil es ja diese Balance ist zwischen dem Genre, True Crime, und sozusagen dem, dem politischen Thema. Und das, das ist ja, darum geht es ja schlussendlich. Es geht ja Absolut. Und ich würde gerne äh, eine Frage stellen. Äh, was war für euch die wichtigste Erkenntnis, die ihr aus dieser langen Arbeit, es muss sehr lange gedauert haben, äh, was ihr da alles zusammengetragen habt, ist unglaublich. Was war die wichtigste Erkenntnis, die ihr mitgenommen habt? inhaltlich, aber auch ähm, formal aus der Arbeit an diesem Film, wie ihr ihn zusammengebaut habt. Das würde mich sehr interessieren. Wahrscheinlich drei Antworten, ne? Ja. <lacht> ja. Wer mag zuerst? Also, ihr ich glaube, euch am längsten damit. Ja. Also erstmal war es eine Herausforderung, ja. die wir gerne angenommen haben, für ein Netflix-Publikum zu erzählen, was in dem Sinne viel jünger ist, wie Sie schon sagten, für die zum Teil, also wo wir Erkenntnisse auch hatten, Rohwetter nichts sagt, noch nie gehört, die RAF vielleicht eine Hip-Hop-Band ist, aber auch relativ wenig Wissen zum Teil da ist, also diese Herausforderung anzunehmen und dann als erstes deutsches Original für, der, also die Maßgabe war ja für Deutschland jetzt den Aufschlag zu machen, aber andererseits natürlich zu wissen, dass da ein weltweites Publikum ist, mit über 200 Millionen ähm, Subscribern, die völlig anders darauf schauen und für die diese deutsche Geschichte äh, völlig neu sein wird und dieser Blick vor allem die dunkle Seite, die dunkle Seite der deutschen Wiedervereinigung sich anzuschauen. Ja, umso ja. wichtiger und ich kann nur sagen, ich habe es schon lauter amerikanischen Freunden empfohlen, die werden das alle <lacht> gucken und werden erstaunt sein, weil das ist so noch nicht dargestellt worden. Ja, das, dieses so nicht dargestellt, was Sie sagen, das war, glaube ich, so ein bisschen auch die Herausforderung, diese, diese, diese Balance zwischen Traum und Trauma vielleicht zu finden. Also auch diese Dunkelheit in die, in die Bilder zu bekommen, in die, die Interviewpartner auch ein bisschen so zu, zu aufzuschließen ne, und zu inszenieren. Überhaupt diese, diese ganze, diese ganze, dieses ganze nah beieinander sein, dass die Wiedervereinigung einerseits so ein, ein glückliches, einzigartiges, glückliches Ereignis der deutschen Geschichte ist und das aber trotzdem da drinnen offensichtlich so viele ja, zerstörte oder zumindest gestörte Biografien liegen, die eben bis ins Heute wirken und die eben nicht aufhören zu wirken. Das war so faszinierend eigentlich für uns, selbst für mich als jemand, der nun aus dem Osten kommt, der sehr viele solche Biografien natürlich kennt. Aber diese Dichte und diese, das anders zu erzählen, das fand ich wirklich faszinierend. Aber insbesondere was eben da die Grundidee von, von Georg und Christian war, eben die Wiedervereinigung über diesen Mord zu erzählen. Ne? Das ist etwas, was ich was wirklich aufgegangen ist, was Tolles. Was ja. Die Dichte, die Dunkelheit, das alles kommt eben auch in den Interviews rüber, so wie die inszeniert sind. Das fragen wir uns ja immer, wo, wie setzen wir die Leute hin? Das ist eine sehr schöne Einheit geworden und trotzdem, und auch die Inszenierungen sind gelungen, aber ich wollte trotzdem fragen, gab es einen Moment, wo ihr gedacht habt, jetzt stößt das Dokumentarische doch an die Grenzen, könnten wir es doch nur fiktional machen? Gab es so einen Moment? 
Also im Moment kam eigentlich schon recht früh am Anfang, weil wir natürlich jetzt bei diesem Genre in Europa oder in Deutschland im Unterschied zu den USA kaum Material haben. Es gibt ja, die Akte ist nach wie vor gesperrt, es gibt keine Gerichts, ja. äh, Gerichtsaufzeichnungen, es ist ein völlig um, anderer Umgang jetzt mit, mit Mordfällen. Und, ähm, aber es war klar von Anfang an, dass wir Robert da als Menschen über das Archiv erzählen wollen und, das, und diese Herausforderung genau an, äh, angehen wollen, nicht daran sozusagen verzweifeln, sondern uns befreien wollen. Also das war schon. Es war schon klar, dass, dass es viele Hürden gibt, aber, ähm, aber auch viele Möglichkeiten gibt, diese Hürden elegant zu umkurven. Ja, und ich muss sagen, äh, ich fühle mich mal wieder bestätigt, weil ich immer sage, eigentlich ist das Dokumentarische und das Dokumentarisch Erzählte noch spannender als die Fiktion. Weil wir wissen, das ist alles real. Das sind reale Menschen, die wir da erleben. In ihrer Dunkelheit, in ihrem Zweifel in ihrem Ärger darüber, dass der Staat diesen Mann nicht besser geschützt hat. Das ist alles sehr intensiv. Also nochmal, große, große Gratulation dazu. Vielen Dank. Vielen Dank. Vielen Dank. Klasse. Wir freuen uns. Mhm. So, there, we, we throw a lot of food. <lacht> That's why. <lacht> פעם אחת אתה מביא לי קרם שבוע, אני מזדהה עם תאים אימא שלך, הבנת את זה? אין קוויאר. אני צריך קוויאר. אין קוויאר, נו. זה מנה. הבנתי אותך. גל, תודה רבה על שהצלחתי עם אותך בקרוב עם אותך בקרוב. תודה רבה. אתה הכי 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 It's such an amazing show. It grabbed all of us. I talked to the jury. It grabbed them. Your presence is amazing. And um, I wanted to immediately watch the second episode and I asked your studios to send it to me right away. And the jury yeah, asked I me wanna, to watch I more watch of it. I want to watch it as well. <laughs> Say it again? I want to watch it as well. I just... <laughs> give me that well, editing, that's, so. <laughs> that's the beauty, um, you know, uh, with, with, with festivals. So we get to see... Uh, new pieces and new stories and TV shows before the audience and the public yeah. does. Um, I can't wait till uh, November when the show is released. It's such an amazing show. Tell me, what were your thoughts when you read the script for the first time? The, the, the first thing that, that caught my, uh, my emotions was the feeling that the uh, uh, Erez Cavell and the Uwe Dabush that brought it They have like a real deep love-hate relationship with the culinary world and yeah. it's, it's uh, just afterward I, I get I, I get to know that that uh, Erez was a real cook mm. and he, he really loves food and he loves the, the kitchen and restaurant and he really hates it and 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 this thing is so is so strong in this uh, in the script and I think in the series as well yeah. But what do you like most about playing a chef uh, in the series, the chef? Uh, what did you learn? All, I, I love I love cooking, like in, in yeah. my personal life. But I, I think what, what was amazing about this thing, because uh, uh, we really built a, a real kitchen and a real restaurant, and we mm. had like in, in the in the cooking scenes we had something like 20 real cooks and and the. Uh, It was all for real. You should do all of that and still act and still do the drama. It was, it was a great Amazing. Event. I had this great uh, colleagues working with me, Guri Alfi. Yeah. Uh, she's the uh, place amazing in, in the show and, and Rotem Sela. What do you, did you learn now about fine dining? Uh, how did you prepare for the role? Did you go through many, many workshops, courses? Did you learn more about cooking First, and fine dining? Uh, we had uh, a culinary uh, supervisor, uh, uh, Chef uh, Moshiko Gamlieli, that have uh, three of the best uh, restaurants in Israel. He, he let me work in his uh, kitchens. Wow. Uh, to run his restaurant, it was amazing. And we did it uh, for a period of a month or so. Okay. And also uh, I got to work uh, in New York in, uh, in two amazing restaurants of uh, Chef uh, Inat Admoni and Chef mm -hmm. uh, James Kant. 
that oh, wow. were kind enough to to let me in uh, in a, the kitchen. And uh, how to be a jerk, I know from my own self. <laughs> <laughs> a photographer, Guy Raz, that is is like an, a real artist. You, you never know where the, the the camera is, and but it's always there. It always tells something and it adds to the story. And I think he made the, the series look very special. Was there a lot of blocking on set, the way the director wanted you to move, or did you go with the flow in the kitchen? We couldn't go really with the flow because of the, the camera movement and the, yeah. because the, the main kitchen was full of glasses and windows, so there was a lot of reflection. Yeah. So there, we, we throw a lot of food. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, why. Yeah, 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 we do it and then like, some someone got stuck somewhere and then you got to reset everything and you yeah. got like tons of food uh, being changed and uh, it was like a, a real composition it was like a like a dance awesome show I'm a big fan of it and again congratulations for this wonderful performance